Hi, this is Alex from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another CD to play for you. Today's CD is Superman with Batman and Robin, Story 8 for 1945. So let's get started. Come on, Pep! The super delicious cereal presents the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Yes, it's Superman! And today we shall join a very much worried Clark Kent and Perry White, for Lois Lane has been accused of murder. Discovering the almost uncanny resemblance between Lois Lane and Dixie Lamar, member of a crooked confidence ring and wanted for the murder of a federal agent, Dr. Bly, cunning leader of the ring, evolved a plan whereby Lois could be made to face the murder charge in place of Dixie. Drugged and dressed in Dixie's clothes, Lois was left at the Red Devil Cafe, a notorious dive. There, the police, tipped off by Dr. Bly, found her and arrested her. As we continue now, Clark Kent and Perry White, editor of the Daily Planet, are at the city jail, waiting in the warden's office for Inspector Henderson. White is almost beside himself with rage. Listen. I'll tell you, Henderson, I'll pay. I'll sue the city for a hundred million dollars. Oh, wait a minute. I'll get the mayor impeached. I'll have Henderson kicked out on his ear. I'll let spread this across the front page of the planet, and I'll buy space in all the competing papers to tell the people of the city now, what a stupid, adult painted free space you know, half big police department we have. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. In a minute, you won't be able to do any of those things. Why not? Who's going to stop me? If I don't calm down, you'll have a heart attack. Then why? It'll serve him right. What am I saying? That's it. We've got to be careful. We can't lose our heads. We've got to know what we're saying. Oh, just wait till Henderson shows up. Yes, you wait. I don't know what I'm saying, and I'm going to say plenty. You mean Silver Lord? Yes, and the district attorney. Another pumpkin had a stinkum poop. What did uh, Henderson tell you? He didn't tell me anything. I haven't seen the fat fool yet. All I know is what came over the teletype. And when Beanie brought it into my office, you could have feathered me with the floor. I, I, I mean, floored me with a feather. What did it say? Uh, well, what did it say? Yes. That Lois was arrested three hours ago. And you know where? Where? The Red Devil Cafe. Huh? One of the lowest dives in the city. Does that make sense to you? No, it does. Well, it makes sense to these half-witted policemen I pay good taxes to support. The Red Devil Cafe. Not only that, but they claim she was drunk. Drunk? I don't believe. Oh, you don't believe. No. And who are you? Do you wear brass buttons and a blue coat and a hat with a lot of gold spinach on it? And do you lead the parade down Main Street on the 4th of July? Oh, no, but what's Is that your good? name Inspector Henderson? And do you get $15,000 a year to solve crimes? No, Then but... who are you not to believe it? Oh, I... You're being sarcastic. I'm being sarcastic? Perish the thought. This is no time for comedy, Chief. Comedy? What about the murder charge? What's the story on that? It isn't a story. It's a pipe dream. They say Lois was leading a double life. Huh? Half the time she was a respectable newspaper reporter, and the other half she was Dixie Lamar, oh. a confidence woman wanted for the murder of a federal agent. What? <laughs> I thought this was no time for comedy. Oh, I can't help it, Chief. It's the funniest thing I've ever heard. Well, you won't find the rest so funny. Why? What do you mean? Three reliable witnesses have already identified Lois as the girl who shot the federal agent in the lobby of the Burton Arms Hotel. You're kidding. Well, that's what the teletype said. Not only that, when the police picked Lois up tonight at the Red Devil, she was wearing the same clothes that this, this, this Dixie Lamar wore when she killed the agent. A red dress, imitation pearls, and the mink coat. Lois never owned a mink coat. Oh, it, it's all a mistake. A mistake? Yeah. <laughs> You call it a mistake. I call it gross miscarriage of justice. Where is that evidence? Open the door. Take it easy. Oh, you think we're going to remain locked up in here? Now, wait. Open the light hat. That won't get you anywhere, Chief. Don't tell me what it'll get me or what it won't get me. Oh. Open the door. What's that? The phone. Hello? Who? Oh, you want Inspector Henderson to. Well, mister, so do I. And if you see him before I do, you tell him that Perry White says he's an empty-headed flatfoot. Yes, I said flatfoot. F-L-A-T foot. Goodbye. He wants Inspector Henderson. I've been waiting two and a half hours, and he wants it. Oh, Kent, I'm warning you. Come on, come on. Come on. Well, he'll be sorrier before I'm through. Take it easy, Mr. White. Yeah, that's the trouble. That's exactly the trouble. What's the trouble? Everyone telling me to take it easy. Everyone telling me to watch my blood pressure. Now look here, Henderson. Unless Lois Lane is released from that cell within 20 minutes, I'll... I'll... You'll what? I'll... I'll go to the mayor. That won't help you, Mr. White. We think we have an open and shut case here. We're proceeding along that line. What do you mean, open and shut, Inspector? I can't tell you, Kent. Not until the DA prepares his report to the grand jury. Oh, you can't, eh? Chief, please. Now look, Inspector, we've... Well, we, we've cooperated with the police department on any number. 
number of the case. That's true, Kent. And but the least you can do is tell us what you think you've got against Lois. Well, all right. But I warn you, it's going to be hard to take. Sit down. Pulling chairs up to the desk. Clark Kent and Perry White anxiously await Henderson's story of the murder charge pending against Lois Lane. How far has the wily Dr. Bly gone to involve Lois? We'll know in a moment when we return to the warden's office at the city prison. But first, here again is your announcer. Next time it's too rainy for you to be out of doors, here's an idea for what to do. Get out your collection of insignia and warplane buttons from packages of Kellogg's Pet and see how close you are to having all the buttons in both the first and the second series. Why, you'll probably make up your mind to eat more of that super delicious whole wheat flake cereal so you can get more prizes. Then you might see how many of those insignia you can identify, like Marine Bombing Squadron 433, for example. You can remember that with a red dragon with two tails, riding a bomb, and firing a machine gun. By the time you get through, you'll be mighty proud of your collection, believe me. Because, you see, these buttons really are smart looking. The colors are clear and bright and sharp, and they're made of metal, so they'll last indefinitely. Now, if anyone should ask you how you got those swell buttons, tell them it's easy. You don't send in a single penny. No, sir, not even a box stop. And you don't buy them. You just ask Mom to get a package or two of Kellogg's Pet. Then look inside for your exciting prize. There's a button in every package of P-E-P Pet, made by Kellogg's of Battle Creek. And now, back to the adventures of Superman. Inspector Henderson has consented to tell Clark Kent and Perry White the nature of the evidence against Lois Lane. Evidence that points to Lois as a murderess. Anxiously, Kent and the gray-haired editor lean forward in their chairs as Henderson begins his recital. Well, in the first place, gentlemen, three completely reliable witnesses have identified Miss Lane as the girl who shot and killed a federal agent in the Burton Arms Hotel lobby. Who are they? The desk clerk, an elevator operator, and a permanent guest of the hotel. A well-known metropolis businessman. Rubbish. Now, wait a minute. Let him finish, Chief. Thank you, Kent. In the second place, the murder gun was found less than an hour ago, and it bore Miss Lane's fingerprints. What? Where was it found? In a bureau drawer in Miss Lane's apartment. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. No? Well, let me ask you a question, Mr. White. How much did Miss Lane earn as a reporter on the Daily Planet? That's none of your business. I'm afraid I'm going to have to make it my business. Well, Mr. White? Ninety dollars a week. And a bonus of Christmas. How large a bonus? thousand dollars. Did she have any other source of income? How should I know? I... I don't think so, Inspector. Then perhaps you can explain how Miss Lane happened to be wearing a $3,000 mink coat and... Sure. Why not? Now, wait a minute. And how, earning ninety dollars a week, she managed to save $60,000, which we located, in a safe deposit box registered under the name Dixie Lamar. How do you know it was her safe deposit box? We found the key to it in her apartment. Kent, Kent, what is this? I told you it, it is going to be hard to take. We haven't taken it yet, Inspector, not by a long shot. Do you want the clincher? Now, before you tell us anything else, what's the connection between Lois Lane and, and Dixie Lamar? They're one and the same person. Miss Lane evidently led a double life. Oh. As Dixie Lamar, she was a member of the Bly Gang. The what? The Bly Gang. Fake oil stock peddlers and confidence men. Lois Lane? Are you crazy? Inspector, you don't really believe that Miss Lane was mixed up with a gang of confidence men? In this police business, Kent, you believe only what you see and no more. But look, isn't it logical to assume that, well, if she really had $60,000 and could afford mink coat, she wouldn't be working eight hours a day at the Daily Planet for $90 a week. Oh, that was a front, a blind. If anyone's blind, you are, Henderson. Yeah. Lois Lane never stole a penny in her life. Lois Lane never led a double life. Lois Lane is Lois Lane. And that's all. How come, then, we found telegrams in her apartment addressed to Dixie Lamar? Telegrams from Ace Scarlatti, one of the most notorious gangsters in Chicago. A man wanted for five murders and a dozen criminal code violations. Where is it, Scarlatti? I'll bring him here and let Lois face him. We'd like to do that, Kent, but unfortunately, it's too late. Huh? What do you mean, too late? Scarlatti was shot and killed in a gang fight three weeks ago. What? Huh? Is this a bad dream? Am I hearing these things, or am I uh, imagining them? I'm afraid you're hearing them, Chief. No. No, it's a nightmare, that's all it is. I, I'll wake up in a great cold sweat, and, and it'll be all over. Things like this can't happen. They, they just can't. What's the next step, Inspector? The evidence will be presented to the grand jury tomorrow. Then? There's no question about getting an indictment. Yes. And after that? You'll stand trial. Oh, good heavens. And frankly, if you want my opinion, on the basis of the case we've already developed, Miss Lane will go to the chair for murder. Stunned almost beyond belief, speechless in the face of Henderson's final statement, Clark Kent and Perry.
very white stare in open-mouthed amazement at the police inspector. Again and again, the horrible phrase runs through their dazed minds. Mrs. Lane will go to the chair for murder. But slowly, the realization dawns that Henderson is real, that what they have heard is real. And no matter what the explanation, Lois is caught in a deadly web from which there seems to be no possible escape. What will happen? Has Dr. Bly, the master spider, spun the web too strong to break? Or can the brains and brawn of Superman rise to the dangerous occasion? This is the kind of test the man of steel has never before been forced to meet. So join with him as he fights for Lois's life against an unseen, unknown enemy. Don't miss a single episode of this exciting story, because strange things are going to happen. Tune in tomorrow, same time, same station, for The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Fellows and girls, be sure to follow The Adventures of Superman. Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday. Same time, same station, by the makers of that super delicious cereal, Kellogg's Pet. And for other thrilling adventures of Superman, see your local newspaper. Superman is also a copyrighted feature, appearing in the Superman DC publications. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. So that was Superman with Batman and Robin, story eight for 1945. So if you like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. We have another video coming out real soon.